he had lifted off the runway. I could see his rotating beacon underneath. Get off, get off, get off. Get off, get off, get off! And then I ducked and set a real quick pair. God, I hope he misses us. As they begin their descent with no tower to guide them, Captain Gatke's radio communications are critical. King Air 1127. Delta's taxiing out. Uh, take off on runway four. They're using four. A King Air A90, a much smaller twin turboprop, is taxiing out to runway four. King Air 1127, Delta holding short of runway four. Be uh, to take in the runway for departure. The commuter plane is now 90 seconds to touchdown. 500. The King Air is in position and holding. On short final for runway 13. 400. The aircraft gonna hold in position on runway 4, or are you guys gonna take off? 700. 7646 Juliet holding for departure on runway 4. 200. Yeah, uh, King Air. Okay, we'll get through your intersection in just 100. a second, sir. We appreciate that. Finals are complete. At the same moment, flight instructor Paul Walker is in a hangar at Quincy Airport. Max reverse. Oh, Christ. What the hell? We heard this explosion that, that rattled the walls and windows shook. And as I came outside, what I saw looked like a mushroom cloud from when you see the films of the atomic bombs going off. At Quincy Airport, Paul Walker rushes toward burning wreckage on the runway. I would say I was at the crash site in less than a minute and a half. As he draws closer to the fire, Walker makes a bone-chilling discovery. It's not only the King Air engulfed in flames, two planes are on fire. Open the door! Please! Someone help! <coughs> Open the door! <coughs> Open the door! Another pilot comes to help Walker on the runway. <coughs> the main exit, an air stair door, is directly behind the cockpit. I grabbed the handle and attempted to open the door. I tried everything that I could do in the world, and I could not get that door to unlatched. I can't do this. I'm going to get help. <laughs> Leaving the airplane was one of the more difficult things I've ever done in my life. When I looked at the captain, there was part of me that knows that she knew that by the time I got back, it would be, it would be too late. That, that I was literally their last hope. Please. Moments later, all hope for the crash survivors is lost. It was easily less than two minutes from the time I was standing by the left wing till it exploded. I felt like I failed. Despite Paul Walker's heroic efforts, four pilots and 10 passengers are dead. It's one of the worst runway accidents in North American history. The commuter flight from Belfast, Northern Ireland was supposed to land in Cork at 9 a.m. Maybe Kerry. 30 minutes later, it's still circling the airport. Cork faces out to the Atlantic, so fog is, is very common. Uh, and fog will roll in, and it will roll out, uh, sometimes at no notice. In our part of the world, we have a, a saying it was like pea soup, because it was very, very thick. Hope we land soon. We've got work to do. There are 10 passengers waiting to land this morning, including Lawrence Wilson, traveling to Cork for the day on business. I was going to Cork to do forklift truck training. I had been in that same location doing the same course uh, several times before. So it was sort of really old hat to go down. I've done it before. Today's flight is aboard a Fairchild Metro 3. Flying the plane today is First Officer Andrew Cantle of England. While he concentrates on circling over Cork, 
Spanish Captain Jordi Sola Lopez is checking the weather at nearby airports. Surface wind is calm. Visibility is 900 meters in fog. All copy. Thanks very much. And uh, the weather, is it improving in Cork? At 9.35, the controller tells the captain the fog is lifted slightly. Visibility at touchdown zone is 500 meters. OK, in that case, any chance to perform one approach there? You are clear to land runway 17. Clear to land runway 17. After 30 minutes circling the airport, the crew must now shift focus to the complex task of getting their plane on the ground. We're good. I've landed and worse. Glide slope is coming in. The pilot confirms the plane is lining up with the runway. OK, glide slope coming in. And they're descending at the correct speed. Speed's OK. I took control of their power, OK? The captain tells the first officer he'll adjust the engine power during the landing. That's fine, yeah. All the lights are on. Landing gear is down. Yes, the weather is much better here. Right was on the left-hand side of the plane, uh, looking out just behind the wing. And I remember I couldn't see anything, no runway, nothing at all. The captain pulls the thrust levers back to reduce power. Unexpectedly, the plane rolls hard to the left. What the heck? looking out the window and seeing grass about 10 foot below me. Well, I knew that wasn't good. Thought I was gone. I did for a minute or two. I thought I was gone. I thought, this is it. I'm, I'm out of here. That's all about it. Easter Monday, 1994, at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. Set, Torque. My controls. KLM City Opera Flight 433 is on its way from Amsterdam to Cardiff, Wales. Look right ahead of us. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Captain Levard spots thunderclouds ahead. He wants to get above them. That's control for flight level 200. Amsterdam KLM 433. Go ahead, 433. Is flight level 200 available? Climb to 200. You are re-cleared flight level 200. Amsterdam air traffic control okays the climb to 20,000 feet. OK, uh, we're not climbing anymore. Approaching 17,000 feet, Captain Levard notices a problem with his plane's performance. No. It's not climbing as quickly as it should be. You need to return to Amsterdam, make a pan call, request to maintain flight level 160. Tell them we have a technical issue. Amsterdam KLM 433, pan, 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 pan. We have an engine problem, and we'd like to maintain 160 for that's copy, sir. You may turn right, heading to Schiphol. The pan call sends the controller into action. We have a pan from KLM 433, now returning to Schiphol. At the airport, emergency vehicles race to positions near the runway.
KLM 433 is just 500 feet above the ground. Watch your speed. The plane has slowed to a dangerously low speed. I'm on it. A sudden bank to the right takes the passengers by surprise. The captain struggles to keep the plane level. Going around, set torque, flap seven, gear up. Then he tries to abort the landing attempt. Flight 433 is now beyond recovery. Steer, steer, steer. Garrett, Garrett, Garrett! Crash, crash, crash. Runway 06, emergency runway 06. KLM City Hopper 433 has crashed in full view of Amsterdam Schiphol Airport Control Tower. The seasoned crew of American Airlines Flight 191 Rudder set. Makes final preparations for takeoff. Spoilers are From Chicago's O'Hare Airport. The DC-10's three-engine layout makes it one of the most recognizable passenger jets on the runway. On this flight, a live feed from a video camera mounted in the cockpit allows passengers to watch the takeoff from the cabin. American 191, you are clear for takeoff. American 191. Underway. You have control. I have control. Runway clear? Clear. OK, setting takeoff thrust. Here we go. Damn, there's the turbulence. Not too rough. I've lost power to my side. The captain's instruments suddenly go dead. Looks like we've lost number one. And he's lost power from the left engine. But the plane is already airborne. Look at this. Look at this. Equipment. I need equipment. He blew an engine. The DC-10 should be able to climb with only two engines. Pilots are trained to cope with this kind of emergency. First, they need to get as far from the ground as they can. They put their plane into a steeper climb. Forward speed drops. We're banking. Go right, go right. The plane is banking sharply to the left. It's only 325 feet from the ground. I can't hold it. American 191 Heavy, do you copy? He's not talking to me. Losing power from one engine should not be causing the plane to bank. Passengers have a frightening view of the ground below. What's going on? The pilots can't get the altitude they need, and they're banking further and further to the left. I'm losing it. Go right, go right. Come on, come on. 300 feet, we're losing altitude. The cockpit camera gives passengers a glimpse of their fate. But they are not the only ones whose lives are in danger. A trailer park just north of the airport is home to thousands of people. Oh, God. And the plane is heading straight for it. Witnesses on the ground can clearly see Flight 191 flying on its side. We're still turning! Level, baby, level! Brace, brace, brace! The DC-10 crashes into an airport hangar at the edge of the airport. The full load of fuel instantly ignites. DC-10 with 271 souls on board has gone down, northwest of runway 32 right. American Airlines Flight 191 has crashed just short of the trailer park beside Chicago's O'Hare Airport. The DC-10 has also obliterated a hangar beyond the runway. Once the fire is under control, the search for survivors can begin. 
All 271 people on board are dead. It's the worst aviation disaster in U.S. history. Sunjet 2A2, proceed directly to runway, backtrack, and hold. Los Rodeos Airport on the Spanish island of Tenerife is busier than it's ever been. BA-783, hold short of the runway and stand by for taxi clearance. With so many planes parked in the taxiways, the controllers instruct departing flights to taxi along the airport's only runway to get into position for takeoff. One of the planes waiting to get to Las Palmas is Pan Am Flight 1736. The Pan Am crew is ready to get back in the air, but they can't taxi to the runway. A KLM 747 has stopped in front of them to refuel. Tenerife, KLM 4805, we finished refueling, requesting clearance for startup. He said, uh, follow KLM down a runway, backtrack, make an exit to get around back of KLM. So that's what we were doing. First Officer Bragg is unfamiliar with the airport. He checks a runway diagram to help find their turn. OK, that's this one right here. Goes ahead. It's going to put us on the taxiway. As they taxi, they listen to the tower controller tell the KLM crew ahead of them what to do after departure. You are clear to the Papa Beacon. Climb two and maintain flight level nine or zero. Right turn after takeoff. Roger, clear to the Papa Beacon. Flight level nine zero, right turn up. We are now at takeoff. OK, uh, stand by for takeoff. I will call you. And we're still taxiing down the runway, Clipper 1736. Papa Alpha 1736, report runway clear. OK, we'll report when we're clear. Thank you. The Pan Am crew will be turning off the runway in just a few more yards. But now, something's wrong. First Officer Bragg can see a plane through the fog. I think he's moving. Look at him. That idiot's coming. Saw KLM, too. Get off. Get off! <laughs> Captain Grubbs tries to steer clear of the oncoming KLM. but it's bearing down on them at nearly 200 miles an hour. He had lifted off the runway. I could see his rotating beacon underneath. Get off, get off, get off. Get off, get off, get off! And then I ducked and set a real quick pair. God, I hope he misses us. 